Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some fun news. Starting with a CPU that runs Crysis, Intel's XE GPU is incredible, Nvidia is upgrading GPUs, and Navi 12. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first Drop made items. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I know I'm a bit late on this, but I just had to cover it. For those who were into PC gaming back when the original Crisis came out, you know that it nearly crippled any PC at the time, ultimately leading to the memes, making it essentially the benchmark for having a powerful system. Well, it's 2020, and things have certainly changed, but who would have ever guessed that a CPU could run Crisis? Well, apparently Linus over at Linus Tech Tips did, as they were actually able to get Crisis, the game, running exclusively on AMD's newest 64-core Threadripper 3990X. That's right, once again, Crisis was running on a CPU. Now, he's actually done this on one of AMD's Epic CPUs, but that was a server chip. This is more of a regular enthusiast CPU, though I will say it's way out of my price range. And of course, it wasn't smooth by any means, and there were issues with freezing, etc., but this is definitely a testament of how far tech has come, specifically how far CPUs have come, that they can actually play games. Let's just say it's good to be alive. Next up for today, we have an exclusive report from WCCF Tech that blows the lid off of a recent story. For those who haven't seen my video where I went over some reportedly leaked slides on Intel's XE GPUs, the architecture is essentially an MCM similar to AMD's Ryzen. Instead of chiplets, Intel is calling their modules tiles, and the architecture comes with up to four. Well, most had speculated that the number of execution units in each tile is 128. I personally didn't really want to talk about that because the 4 tile GPU was a whopping 500 watts and given each execution unit comes with the same 8 cores as their current architecture, we'd only be looking at 4096 cores, and that just didn't seem right. Well, according to WCCF tech source within Intel, to which I will say is yet unnamed, so I can't definitively say one way or the other, but at least according to this, Intel's XE GPUs are separated into LP and HP parts, with LP being low power or low performance and HP being high power or high performance. Well, apparently the LP does come with 128 EUs per tile, but the HP parts, which is what we saw in the leaked presentation, comes with a whopping 512. That means, given Intel keeps their current 8 cores per EU with the 4 tile part, we could be looking at a GPU with 2048 EUs and an unbelievable 16,384 cores. To say that's a pretty huge part is an understatement, though Intel's upcoming XE GPUs are set to be on a very nice process, so it may be possible. Plus, with the added efficiency of splitting the GPU up into a multi-chip module, this very well could happen. Let's just hope Intel figured out how to make it work for gaming, which is the main issue AMD has had with an MCM GPU so far. Fingers crossed. Next up for today, Nvidia, or at least their partners, are apparently upgrading GPUs. Originally found and shared by video cards, MSI recently submitted some new GPUs to the EEC. Among them is the GTX 1650, which we've obviously seen before, but not with GDDR6 memory like it's shown here. And no, this isn't a 1650 Super as pointed out by video cards. It's essentially a slightly upgraded GTX 1650, and I think it's Nvidia moving towards GDDR6 across their desktop platform, since only the 1650 and 1660 currently come without it. Of course, how well this plays in a performance has yet to be seen, but given how easily modern GPUs can be memory starved, I think we could see some real differences. Lastly for today, I wanted to go over a bit of an enigma of a GPU. For those who haven't been keeping up, so far for AMD, we have Navi 10 and Navi 14. Navi 10 comprises of the RX 5600, 5600 XT, 5700, 5700 XT, and the mobile variants. Navi 14 is the RX 5500 XT, 5500, 5300 XT, etc. Then there's Navi 12, which we've been seeing for a little while, but now we have a good bit more information about this obscure GPU. For one, it has the same 40 compute units as Navi 10, but the big difference is that according to all the leaks we have, Navi 12 comes with HBM2 memory. In fact, it's the same HBM2 memory that's in the Radeon 7. Lastly, it comes with support for deep learning instructions. 
Ultimately, I think Navi 12 is going to be a workstation or some kind of new MacBook mobile GPU, something like that. Either way, it should be coming fairly soon. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Intel's upcoming 500 watt GPU or how about a CPU running crisis? Let me know down in the comments below and definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.